Mm. Those of us who went to And I've seen them getting some accolades even. I think they even yeah. have a startup now. They have a startup. They mm. have already got a podcast, podcast that is having the likes of Dr. Vimal Shah on yeah. it and many other leaders yeah. in the African continent and the rest. Yeah. Mm. These guys are so self-motivated because they have a vision for where they're going to. They have a knowledge of what how to get there. Their mm. strategy is working. You know, mm. They didn't just wake up and start doing silly things. Yeah. So when we start holding guys, when we start holding their feet to the fire in terms of this is what you promised that you want to do, Mm. majority of us Kenyans and our youth are very good at giving political promises. Mm. Once again, they won't. Hot air. Yes. <laughs> they won't. They won't. They won't. They won't. They won't. Hot air, you know? Mm. So somebody comes and says, I want to be a neurosurgeon, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. What do they know about neurosurgery? Okay. You know, mm. so the other day, for example, in one of the schools that I was in, uh, giving my usual, uh, you know, pep talks and motivational talks. Mm-hmm. Uh, and some of the students, as usual, came up and said, we want to be, these are high school students, we want to be a, a neurosurgeon. So I said, okay, if you want to be a neurosurgeon and you're so bold about that, eh, and you're in Form 3, eh, mm-hmm. okay, tell me what actually is a neurosurgeon. They have no idea. Mm-hmm. Then I take them and say, let's go further. What is a neuron? Mm-hmm. Before we go now to surgery of the, the neuron. neuron. Mm. Because the neurosurgeon <laughs> is, is, operat- is operating on the neuron. Yeah. Guys do not know about the differentiated, differentiated cell that is mm. called a neuron mm. and the basic properties of a neuron mm. vis-a-vis an epithelial cell mm. or any other hey, cell that is there. Mm. Oh, sorry, sorry. I'm now... <laughs> no, 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 it's not because okay. uh, we want people <laughs> to learn nice. about uh, mm-hmm. neurotransmitters, mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, including serotonin, which mm-hmm. is activated by morning sunlight and all that that because mm. we also have issues right now with mental health yeah. Yeah. that is pervading mm. the country and stuff. the world. Mm. So basic this biology interesting. Yeah. would teach them yes. that you need a dose of serotonin. S- yes. to, sunshine. Mm. To, mm. And that's activated by the sunshine in the morning. So mm. the sun is not just in the morning to wake you up, mm. but it's actually to activate all the other uh, neurotransmitters as well. Yeah, nice. So yeah. You're healthy. And this is also some of mm. the basis of yes. uh, neurosurgery. And in mm. fact, that has brought me to a very good thought. I have a very dear friend called Dr. Beverly Jabat Chasram. She's a consultant neurosurgeon at uh, at Aga Khan. Yeah, she came for one of our Exactly, events, having studied actually. in UK for almost 17 years yeah. oh. to get that. So in fact, we'll need we'll to bring her on the podcast. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She's been so, here for one of our events. Actually, actually two. Uh, actually two. Two events, uh, yeah. So mm. thank you, Julius, for mm. bringing that. Yes. And one of the things that uh, when you're speaking about Yuri and... Uh, Body face. Mm. I think they're also now international DJs. Okay? Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yes. Qualify for that. Mm. Yeah. And... Yeah. And taking it, uh, when I was growing up, at least it was almost taken that if you're a DJ, you're the biggest sinner on the block. Yes. <laughs> so you don't even dare. And then today they are paid more than doctors. Yeah. You know this yeah. life is uh, funny. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 so I'm happy about that. Yeah. But I think the school in, uh, in Colorado, which was started by my friend, mm. uh, that they initially went to, and uh, uh, can you walk them through? And they went to the school f- and they, they would wait tables, yes. but they were yes. determined to do it and yes. they finished. Yes. Uh, so it's they, an they experimental went, school. They went to Watson Institute. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a lot of people don't understand is that the U.S. has very organized summer programs mm. over, the, over the summer program. Okay? Yeah. Interesting. Now, these particular programs and this particular Watson Institute one, and mm. my daughter went to one called Lean Gap. Okay. Mm. They are very difficult to get in. Okay. Yeah. Very, very difficult to yeah. get in. But when you go in and uh, they take you through these entrepreneurial programs and training. Yeah. First you, of all, it's definitely networks of a lifetime. Yeah, yes. the, the elite yes. schools. Yes. Because they're elite schools. schools. Based on the yeah. legacy yes. plans. Mm. Yes. So, for example, where my daughter went to the Lean Gap program, they took 40 uh, students. Uh, from the world. Africa, from around the world. Mm. She was the only black African. Wow. Mm. Which is really sad. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. reality. It's yeah. a reality. Yeah. Mm. So where are the yeah. black Africans? But now for, for my daughter Christy to actually go to Linga, yeah. she went to Linga because of other mentees earlier in our program who had wanted to go there, but life was such that they were not able to raise the $8,000 they needed to go there. Mm. So one of the things that I then learned, because of, for me I'm a progressive learner, yes. is also teach these kids how to fundraise. Mm. So when my daughter hit me with this invoice of $8,000, I said, wait a minute, mm. I have taught you how to fundraise. Wow. Mm. Let us see you raise this fund. I think Teddy, you're also one of those who contributed to her. Yes, mm. but also uh, <laughs> I, I told you a way of fundraising, <laughs> yeah. of, of breaking it down yes. into smaller pieces yes. so, that if you, mm. so that if you tell me $500, Dollars, it's better than if you tell me eight thousand. Exactly, yes. you can get exactly. as yes. many as sixteen people each to fund it. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. So, yeah. so now for my daughter to end, eventually be able to raise eight thousand dollars equivalent. Yes. Okay. Over a three month period. Yeah. 
and she was 15 years old. Wow. I get very upset when I find people coming to me and telling me we want to raise 20,000 shillings to Meshindua. Mm. So I say, if mentored kids, 15 years, she's mm. able to raise that amount. Mm. I didn't yes. have that money. Mm. Yeah, but she understood how to present herself to potential uh, you know, people who are interested in her course. Mm. She knew how to write her profile, share her profile. She knew how to present her, her need. She knew how to do. And she did this on her own. Mm. So what would happen is a few parents uh, and a few other people that I know, like Simon, would call me very upset and say, Bana, boss, give a mom on buy So you call me and tell me that you need money. <laughs> that it's an Arambe. <laughs> yeah. I said, no, no, no. It's not mom on buy mm. She has a program that she wants to run and she's taking the responsibility mm. for And it. getting the skills of a lifetime. Mm. And getting the skills of, of a lifetime. So uh, you can, uh, in your calling me, I'll confirm that, yes, it's true. It's not a scam. Mm. It's true that she actually needs to raise this money. Mm. And please, I'm requesting her to have that conversation with you guys. Mm. This girl raised that money, went for that program, turned 16 after the program in Los Angeles, California. Wow. The average young person who is in school does not even have a passport. Mm. The average young person is not able to tell us anything about how the world really looks like mm. because here is a young girl who is able to get onto a flight by herself, mm. fly Amazing. to New York, okay, meet our mentors in New York, do a few things with them, go to Baltimore, yeah. meet our other mentors there. But Bear in mind, she's 15. Yeah, 15. Fly across from Baltimore yeah. eh, to San Francisco. Yes. Okay? Stay there for that program over that period of, was it, eight weeks. Yes. Get onto a bus by herself, go all the way to Los Angeles. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Stay with our other mentor there for another two weeks and then fly back. And then the greatest joke about it is, mm. uh, you know, her mother was very concerned. Hey, Bana, you know. Hey, Isn't she, this she, dangerous? She's missing school <laughs> because, because she missed half of second term. Wow. Mm. So she's missing school. A headmistress, I don't want to mention the school, was mm. very pissed off with me. But said, it was a local Kenyan uh, local high Kenyan school, school where she was mm. doing KCSE. Wow. The, the local, the headmistress said, I'm the most irresponsible parent I've ever met. Yes. Mm. How, how do you give your daughter permission to go across the seas like this? So guess what? In the next entrance exam, who gets the highest marks? Are you the serious? Kid, yes, the kid mm. who has not been there. Why? Mm. Because she has been she has been motivated mm. by that opportunity. Her eyes have opened. Her life skills have grown. Mm. She's got to understand what geography is when we are discussing latitude and longitude and mm. timelines mm. Yes. and uh, and time zones and whatnot. Okay. Uh, and, and seasons. And mm. seasons and all yeah. those. She's yeah. not just reading it theory in the book. Mm. Okay. She's got to understand how governments work as mm. and when you have to present a passport. Your papers. Mm. Yeah. White. What What does it mean to present a passport? What does it mean to get a visa? What does it mean? She has understood those kind of processes. Let me tell you, she's gone through the curriculum. Mm. Other than now specifics of chemistry and titration and the rest, mm. yeah. she has gone through literally what the school academic programs are supposed expects, to be teaching yeah, mm. Expects her to have. As a result of that, mm. with all due respect, yes. having been harassed for four years, being told you're the worst parent in this school, yes. your child is absenteeism is, is through the roof. <laughs> yes. Mm. 94 of them did KCSE. Uh-huh. She was the second highest in the school. The wow. wow. Yeah. How wow. does that wow. happen unless wow. what we are actually doing works? It works. Mm. And which... Uh, That's amazing. And yes. which comes to the big... So uh, so, so the, the life in high school is much richer with this experience. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had this. <laughs> <laughs> Me too, man. Me too, man. And, and which is mm. why uh, one of the most important things I wanted... Julius to do this uh, exit interview before he leaves mm. because I believe, I'm a believer like initially we are early believers of Africa stalking, yes. even when it was nothing yes. or uh, and we grew it and we built it and we're very proud of it Yeah. and in the same way as I told you, I had an experience of being in, in uh, uh, a sponsor for education opportunity, yeah. Yeah. they walked us through the, and we worked for in Wall Street and also their financial uh, philanthropic organizations mm -hmm. like I also worked for Edwin Gould Foundation mm -hmm. from the robber baron Edwin Gould mm -hmm. who, who built America but left most of his money to help uh, Whoa. people like us and Is others. Serious, eh? Yes, Edwin Gould, look him up. Yes. And, uh, and uh, so Michael Oshowitz uh, mm. is the one who started sponsors of education opportunities, a Jewish man, probably is now in his 80s or 90s. Yes. But what I wanted to say in short is that what Julius you have just said. That's the arcade way. That's yes. that's the primary reason I wanted you to even come here yeah. and articulate it so that people see that there's something fundamentally wrong with the educational system. Mm -hmm. And and they may reject your way or all these kind of things, but it works. Yes. Yeah. It's proven it that works. it works because yeah. even Ernest Ocheng or yes. Odiambo, Ernest Ocheng, when I first met him, yes. I don't think he qualified to go to <laughs> Harvard. 
<laughs> at the first time, but you worked, you panel beaten. Oh, yes. And uh, all these kind of things. Interesting. So, yeah, so he Until was, he, he was arrived at, at Harvard. Yes. So he was a Jake yeah. what or what you know? No, he, he, he yeah, was. Yeah, tell us about that story. No, yeah. Ernest, yeah. Ernest, Ernest was one of the young men who was our mentees from, uh, from uh, Alliance. He came in actually in our gap year program. Okay. Mm. So he didn't, we, were not, we didn't engage with him within high school, but after high school, we have our gap year program. Okay. Yeah. So he came into the gap year program and he was very motivated, incredibly motivated young man. Mm. And we gave him a lot of hard work to do, mm. honestly. I, 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 this young man was living in Rongai. Mm -hmm. We have uh, events that are starting in uh, CBD, Nairobi CBD at mm -hmm. 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. This guy has to wake up at 4.30 a.m. Wow. At 5.30 now we'll be getting a matatu to come into town so that mm. he can be able now to start getting involved in this program. Yeah. Other people who want to roll out of bed at 10, yeah. you know, and yeah. take it easy. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah. so we took him through. <laughs> I like the Do I feel like that's me? <laughs> it's, it's, it's identifying him. Yeah? I'm, I'm, it, it may be. <laughs> I'm Continue. I'm going, I'm going too close to the bone. Eh? I, need to, I need to ease off. Uh, no, no, carry on. Yeah. Yeah, so so my, pro, my, my point is that through that gap year program, yeah. he has to meet all these top mentors. Yeah. Okay, he has to meet people like Teddy here. He gets mm. to meet the Dr. Vimalsha. Mm. We push him. You know, he gets to understand how to introduce himself, how to aspire highly, how to present himself, how to, you know, like one of the things we, we I'm sorry, we are very unfair. We, we make jokes of him because the first time we put him on national TV, he turned up in a T-shirt. That's okay. one of the things we've never forgiven him for. <laughs> but now that he's with Facebook and he's with Mark Zuckerberg, uh, things are serious. He can wear his T-shirt. He can wear a T-shirt. That's crazy. And in fact, funny enough, now he has gone to tweed jackets. Oh, uh, so, nice. So he was here oh. recently. Yes. And I saw him with a tweed jacket at, uh, and Julius organized for us to, to meet them at Park. Parklands. Parklands Sports Club. Parklands Sports yes. Club. Yes. yes. And majority of the events are done at MOW club in MO C. Yes. yes. Uh, because that's where Julius uh, has his home. Yes. His original home near there. Yes. But what I wanted to say about also uh, uh, Eric mm. is that Eric subsequently went to Harvard mm -hmm. and then now works for Facebook. Mm. So I asked him when I saw him there. Using the up, Arcade way. Yes, mm. exactly. Yes. It does work. Yes. It's, it's yes. verifiable, Amazing. it's yeah. uh, scalable, <laughs> and it's repeatable. Yes. <laughs> so, so it's a scientific, uh, yeah. based on scientific yeah. Yeah. outcomes yeah. Yes. and results. Yes. Yes. And so I stand with that. But what he, what he so I'd ask him, when you met, uh, I asked him, have you met Zuckerberg? Mm. He said, okay, well, we just met on the, on the, on the Zoom, water, Skype, no, oh. no, no, water hole. Ah, at the water cooler. No, no, no yes. at the water cooler. So, yes. which is a nice thing. So, I said, hi, what I'm doing. Then I said, what did he ask you? Uh, and things like that. And so, at least he shared a few things that he was in Harvard. Mm -hmm. And, of course, you know, Zuckerberg dropped out of Harvard. Interesting. You know, Harvard people now working for him. Mm -hmm. So, they had that kind of conversation. Yeah. But uh, what I was just trying to prime in his mind is that, uh, is he using that opportunity to actually meet the person who began the company. Yes. Before, because it would be very sad to be at such a place and you don't meet the creators or the founders and engage them because as an African, mm. my ideology is because Jesus has talked about asking the mentees to have a vision. Yeah. My vision is always for Africans to go back, to, to go to the States or mm. wherever they will go in the world mm. and then to come back. Yeah. And build Africa. If they don't want to build the whole of Africa, yeah. they can build their village. Yeah, if they don't yeah, want yeah. to build their village, they can build their immediate family members. Mm. It's, it's extremely important because when people were asking me now about the Queen of England, yeah, I went. Julius and I went to a school was was called the Duke of York, okay. basically named after the father of Queen Elizabeth, mm. uh, uh, Elizabeth uh, II uh, Rex, as they call her, ER. Mm. So. My question was that if some people ask, did Britain or Her Majesty do wrong mm. by conquering or colonizing Africa? Mm -hmm. And that's a big debate right it's, now. It's a rhetorical question I'm yes. asking. Mm -hmm. But yes. I need you to think about it for a while. Mm. And also, what prevents the African, now that we know what we know, mm. to, to claw back on what was taken from us yes. or eat about, why are we waiting yes. and what are we waiting for? So that's the question that I have uh, for the listeners. Mm. And then I'll take it back to Julius because his reason for starting ACAD and all that is also to equip these youngsters. Mm -hmm. And and just like a prophet who is not appreciated at home mm. or because 
the biggest pastime for Africans is waiting. Mm. I'm also an African. <laughs> they are waiting. And going to church. They are waiting. <laughs> they are waiting. Says the reverend. <laughs> yes, yes. They are waiting. Yeah. They are waiting yeah. for Julius yeah. to be there tomorrow, the day after tomorrow. And then I say, this is an exit interview. He's going to Dubai. Mm. Basically, yeah, this is more or less immigrating to Dubai mm. to be with his better half. Mm. So I said, let us have the Kenyans and the Africans who have been here. Because Julius has been here for 12 years. 12 years. Mm. And 12 years is such a long time. Why would you now start chasing him last minute? Yes. Mm. And he was here for all the yeah. 12 years. Yeah. And I have, a, <laughs> I have almost a similar story. Yeah. Now, when I had some time with something, now that I want to come back and rebuild and we help take Africa stock into the next level, mm -hmm. some people are now chasing me saying, want to do X, Y, Z, because now they have seen me on some videos for okay. 18 and all that. So now suddenly... Mm. Guys are like, oh, so, we have something for you to do. So, yeah, so, <laughs> so I'm asking them, yeah. if I had the time to engage you and you didn't want to engage me, unintentionally, I've been in the village and I'll continue being in the village because I want Africans to learn that we need to build our own countries. Mm. And, our, and our countries start from the villages. Some yeah, people yeah. may not be able to take the villages, Uh, on leave there, mm. but, but Kisumu Airport is just 45 minutes from my village mm -hmm. if you are driving at the right speed, right? Mm. And then the truth is that you have internet. Mm. And, 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 and if you're a disciplined worker or person, then you can work remotely and execute from anywhere in the world. Yeah. And, and that's why I'm keen. Like when we did this a few months ago, we did something close to when he had the fire side with Professor Betang and Demo. Yes. He shared about his life, things that people didn't even know. And in fact, he even cautioned us about this hunger and famine mm. that we're having now. And that was on May 31st. Mm. He said it with his own mouth mm. that guys from uh, August, September, we're going to have a big famine. And if mm. the government doesn't do X, Y, Z, mm. come February. There'll be no food in November. Yeah, we'll be in such trouble. And yeah. this was said here. Yeah. And now he's working in Brussels, yeah. in Belgium. What I'm trying to say is, Africans, my fellow Africans, mm. please engage each other mm. so that the wealth of Africa is also used in Africa and benefits also Africa. Yeah. You see that when yeah. the person is still there. Yeah. Because there's no point of coming then to the funeral then you're crying uh, so much, yeah. pretending. But the person was there and they're walking now all amongst along. you yeah. all yeah. along yeah. and you're not engaging them. Mm. Yeah, so, so, so that's why... Uh, for Julius, I think uh, Eric Ocheng, among others, having now is working for Facebook in in the US, and uh, he, he he keeps on coming back home to support his family and uh, also his friends. Mm -hmm. We also have, which you can speak briefly about, so that they see the varied examples, because I had the opportunity to I'm um, the number 10 of 17 children. Mm -hmm. And my father was a very handy, he was very present and uh, he liked engaging us to work with him. Mm. So my job was, my father had a Renault TS-16, mm -hmm. uh, white in color, KMN 547. Wow. Mine was cleaning the wheels. <laughs> and I polished those wheels mm. like there was no tomorrow. Uh. And the other job that I had was to water my father's favorite plants. Interesting. And the third job that I had at home was to polish my father and mother's shoes spotlessly. Mm. Yeah. This was my daily task. Mm. And the reason why I'm saying this mm. is because Akkad is also task-oriented. Yes. Mm. These yes. kids are given mm. something to do mm. and a structure to follow mm. because mm. some of them may not have that structure mm. or may never have even seen that structure, yes. including even just holding their forks and spoons properly. Mm. Ah. Or, mm. yes, or, mm. uh, and I'll ask him to speak about the latest... Because uh, the last one, an MOW and the kids came from Madare. Yes. So you'll speak a bit about that. Mm -hmm. But I wanted you to speak about the idea that uh, you've been a father figure to them. And what lately I've noticed which uh, uh, has happened because of the passing of time, mm -hmm. some of the mentees are getting married. Yeah. And, uh, and, and uh, they're about two or three this week. Or two, I think two, yeah, Eric they're, and... Uh, there are three, actually. Yeah, and yeah. Michael and somebody. So oh, yeah. you could also share about those because mm. we want Akkad and yourself mm. to be an embodiment mm. of what can be if young African, 
youngsters, somebody holds their hands mm -hmm. or shows them the way. Yeah. Mm. And uh, because even for me, part of the reason why we're here at Africa Stalking mm. is that by the grace of the Almighty, mm. in 2000, I had the grace to hold the hands of the founders of Africa Stalking. Mm. So you see that? Yes. And yes. these things do work. Yes. Mm. And it's not magic. Sometimes yeah. I may play it or you might think it's magic that you're actually doing it yourself. Mm. But at that, those points, I usually let people to lead themselves. Mm. They, they'll be thinking they're leading themselves, mm. but I'm actually leading them. Yes. Mm. So that's my style. Yeah. Yes. Yes. See yeah. That? Yes. So yes. you can speak about those three people and how you have created a structure, mm. including for some of my favorites like Chama mm -hmm. and her sister. Uh, because the first time when I came to Akkad and they encountered me on the Zoom, they kept on asking, who is this guy? Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> Maybe you can start with that. <laughs> mm. whenever, whenever, whenever people ask that question, I tell them, you have no clue. Then I ask them, do you really want to know? Yeah. Mm. Do you want to pay the price of knowing who this guy is? Because yeah. it's not just academic knowledge. You'll have to put things into practice. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I love it when now Ted is able to ask serious, hard-pointed questions, especially mm. like now, over the last year or so, through his I Am poem, you know, mm. where he's able to have uh, young people uh, understand and express who they are, okay. you know, based on where they come from, what is mm. their history, what is their lineage. And then that, for example, is one of the key things that we do in our Akkad way. Mm. We want young people to be able to know who they are and to be able to express it mm. and to do so confidently. Mm. Because you can't want to go to some of these top institutional places, you know, yeah. that where you'll be the only black person in a sea of white people. Yeah. And you don't know who you are. Yeah. And you're not even proud of where you come from and mm. you're proud of your lineage. Mm. And by the way, that's one of the key things that will come out in your essays when you're... Ah, uh, you know, I was sick, actually going to talk about the essay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is a practice towards it. This is a practice. So so yeah. some of my young people, when we invite them now to write these essays, they feel too lazy. They're not mm. willing to do that. They did it for KCAC, you know, mm. English compo yeah. composition. Yeah. Why should they write any further essays? I say, Sour, you don't mm. feel like writing essays? Don't write any essays. So guess what happens at the end of the gap year program? They need a recommendation for, you know, they've got an, uh, they make an application such and such a place. Yeah. And so now they share with me what the application uh, essay looks like. And I look at this thing and I laugh. And one of the saddest things that I used to tell some of those guys is that, look, yeah. and this was much earlier on, you have finished from four, you're writing an application essay to some of these top places. My daughter is in standard six. She can do a better job of mm. writing an essay like this. Mm. She's not even been in high school. So please, for things like this, feel free not to use the ACAD name. Do not say you're even associated with <laughs> Because you refuse to write essays. Mm. All you remember on writing essays was for KCAC. Mm. And maybe all you're doing was copy-pasting at that time, you know? Mm. So but quite pocho, honestly... Pocho. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> so quite honestly, it's a fatherly relax. Mm. Now, when you write essays, uh, and you'll probably hear this from some of the mentees, they write me a two-page essay, I reply with a six-page uh, response. Mm -hmm. So some of them feel crushed. Because I am analyzing everything that they have written. Well, guess what? I am analyzing it so that you can know how to improve. I'm not analyzing mm. it because I'm trying to show you I'm cleverer than you and mm. I can be able to do better. Yeah. It is when these young people go through that process. If we just use a gap year as, as an example, there are 10 particular core subjects that will take them through. Mm -hmm. So at the end of that period, you should have written a minimum of 10 essays. Mm. But if I have responded to your essay and I've shown you where the mistakes are, you need to rewrite the essay. Mm -hmm. Chances mm -hmm. are you're not going to get it right the first five times. Yeah. Mm. But by the fifth time, now you'll have understood what it means to, you know, to flow like this, to write this, to do the other. Okay? So that if and when you're now making an application essay, uh, to Harvard, to Stanford, to UPenn, to Yale, or whatever it is, to Cambridge. Yes. You already understand how to express who you are. Mm -hmm. You understand how to address the issues they are, uh, they are asking. Mm -hmm. You know, this is not KCSE. This mm -hmm. is different. Mm -hmm. Okay, the marking scheme in quotes yes. is radically different. Exactly. And actually, Julius, mm -hmm. uh, uh, let the viewers know that... Uh, the essay is just 500 words. Mm. So you have to be very pithy. Yes. Mm. You cannot start telling me all your problems and all your personal <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> 500 words. Yes. Yeah. You need to uh, hit the nail on the head mm -hmm. and distinguish yourself among possibly a pile of 10,000 yes. yeah. applicants. Yes. So yeah. you really must be mm. a standout yeah. and an exceptional. And this kind of is and in fact this is a skill mm. you'll use for the rest of your life mm. because yes. even when you're presenting because offices and places of work and other places they, those have office politics and whatever yes, so yeah. the way you express yourself determines whether you sail or you or, or, 
or, or, or sink. sink. Yeah. And 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 so this is a life long skill mm. and uh, and a, and a life uh, long learning skill mm. that you then get because believe it or not, uh, and this because uh, now we are speaking about uh, the Queen uh, Elizabeth's time. That yes. She's gone. Yes. Mm. The truth of the matter is that uh, some Westerners mm. may judge you harshly mm. if they look at your document and say, oh gosh, look at the way this African is. Everything. Then they can just trash your stuff. Mm. Mm. And when you write for interviews, mm -hmm. uh, to be interviewed at a job, yeah. there's a piece of writing they ask for. Yeah. So they ask that to see how you think yeah. and if you think clearly. Mm -hmm. Because what Julius is not necessarily mentioning, some people will tell him he's writing well, but what, what often people even here in Kenya forget is that the person who is writing well is actually thinking very clearly yes. Yes. and thinking uh -huh. very well yes. as a consequence of their intellect, intelligence and knowledge. Yes. Mm. So that is forgotten. And they say, oh, gosh, you write well. And because they don't want to pay you a compliment that they, they, that they think you're smart or sharp. Yeah. Because just, that's oh, the <laughs> oh, you write well, but, but writing well just doesn't come out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. That's true. There's a basis for it. So mm -hmm. there's a discipline around it. Mm -hmm. And that's what we'd like to make sure that uh, the people who have come through ACAD mm -hmm. speak clearly and authoritatively, mm. both on paper mm. and by their voice. Because a lot of Kenyans like putting their hands on their mouth when they're speaking, or yeah. they muffle yeah. their voice, yeah. Yeah. They, they, they chew their, their, their nails. Their, 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 their nails. Mm. And the world doesn't have so much time. In fact, uh -huh. in a place like in New York, <laughs> mm. if you, are, you don't express yourself or showcase yourself with an executive presence within the first three seconds, you're thrown away. Wow. There are almost 17 million people. So mm. fighting for the chances. Fighting for the chances. So this skill is a fundamental skill. Yeah. And it's a very important skill. Mm. And that's why And I'd very like, underrated. Underrated. And mm. that's why if the Almighty blesses, it will be good for him to uh package this and to sell it in bits, whether it's sold as a dollar. Especially to startups. Yeah, or two dollars, exactly. In Africa. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And yeah. trying to raise funds. And